you may have noticed that some herbs taste really gross. In fact, the number one reason my family or clients don't take their herbs every day is because they simply can't stand the taste, sometimes gagging on the taste. If you've been struggling to get your family or even yourself to actually embrace herbal remedies on a daily basis, stick around. This episode is for you. I have got you covered. Hey friends, welcome back. My name is Kristen and I am here to help you learn how to use herbs to improve your wellness and feel better in your body. And today's episode, I am sharing how to take herbs without being grossed out by the taste. We're going to cover two main things, the actual taste profile of herbs so that you can understand how taste gives us clues about an herb's benefits and we're also going to talk about the tips that I have to make herbal medicine more palatable even for the pickiest people because we know herbs only work if you take them. So let's start by breaking down taste. Now how something tastes can actually give us a hint about what nutrients are in it and what it's going to do for our bodies. For example, sweet tastes often indicate carbohydrates and that gives us energy. Salty taste is going to suggest a high mineral content and bitter tastes historically have warned us of potentially toxic or spoiled foods. Now in herbalism, understanding the connection between taste and an herb and medicine can actually make your herbal practice more effective and even hopefully help you appreciate more complex tastes for their benefits to the body. And there are five primary tastes in herbal medicine, depending on which system you follow. As a Western herbalist with a background in yoga and Ayurveda, I really focus on sweet, salty, sour, pungent, and bitter. And then also I like to talk about astringency, which is more of a mouthfeel than an actual flavor, but I still find it really important. Now, each of these tastes signals a different action in the body and knowing how to balance them is key to maintaining health and just as important, making herbal remedies more enjoyable so that you will actually take them. So let's actually break each of these things down so that you understand a little bit more when you come across these tastes. So first of all, of course, we have sweet, everybody's favorite flavor. Now, most people naturally flavor sweet tastes because evolutionarily speaking, sweet tastes mean calories and calories mean survival. We're wired to love sweetness. Sweetness actually triggers a dopamine release in the brain so that we are happy and excited when we experience it. But in herbalism, when we talk about a sweet herb, we're not referring to sugar. Sweetness in herbalism actually refers to an herbs and carbohydrates. So these are herbs like licorice, fennel and cinnamon, they, those actually taste sweet, but there are a lot of other herbs that we have that are described as sweet because they are nourishing and tonifying because they build and strengthen tissue, they enhance immunity, and they provide energy while also reducing inflammation and irritation. Now, for example, this might include herbs like marshmallow or slippery elm bark and licorice. These are going to fall under the category of sweet because of their soothing, tissue building qualities and the fact that they usually have a lot of starch and carbohydrates. Now, another flavor that we have is salty. Now, salty herbs don't actually contain sodium unless we're talking about seaweeds and kelps. Instead, the term salty refers to a high mineral content. So salty herbs like nettle, as well as seaweed, are loaded with minerals and vitamins that nourish the body, that support adrenal function, and improve hydration. These are herbs that often act as mild diuretics that help to clean the kidneys and flush things out of the body and reduce water retention. Now, pungent herbs and pungency refers not just to heat, like herbs that are warming or spicy, like our gingers and our garlics, our cayenne, but also pungent herbs are going to refer to herbs that sort of pack a punch flavor-wise, especially things like aromatic herbs that have a lot of essential oils. So like peppermint and lemon balm, those are, those are also going to be considered our pungent herbs. So we have our really spicy things, and then we have like the spice rack. And pungent herbs 
usually stimulate circulation and they boost metabolism. Pungent herbs are going to increase body heat and they're going to help to clear congestion with their pungent properties. Now, pungent herbs also aid digestion and reduce inflammation, and they often have antimicrobial properties in them. And you're going to see them commonly used in supporting respiratory health and relieving cold and flu symptoms, especially if you're doing kitchen medicine at home. Now, another taste is sour and sour is acidic and tart. Sour herbs are also going to stimulate digestion by increasing stomach acid and saliva. When you have something sour, it has a tendency to create a lot of moisture in the mouth and sour herbs can actually help to enhance nutrient absorption and improve liver function and support cardiovascular health by improving circulation. They also tend to be rich in vitamin C and antioxidants. For example, herbs like rose hips and elderberry and hibiscus are all going to fall into this category. And these are also herbs that are great for digestion and for immune support and enhancing overall vitality. Now let's talk about bitter. Probably my favorite flavor, at least theoretically, and it's the one that people most often dislike, which is completely understandable. But I think that bitters are often incredibly misunderstood. They're so beneficial for the body. Now, bitter herbs stimulate digestion by increasing saliva and stomach acid and digestive enzymes. They support liver function and stimulate detoxification. They help to regulate appetite and blood sugar levels, and they're really excellent for improving skin health and, again, detox issues because of their effect on the liver. Now, bitter herbs are going to include some softer bitters like our chamomile and lavender and burdock, but the class of bitters also includes more eupeptic bitters, really strong bitters like dandelion and gentian and artichoke leaf and angelica. And I know that they seem disgusting. I know this seem gross. A lot of people don't enjoy bitters, but these are herbs that should definitely be part of your daily routine, even if the taste is a challenge. Again, you can start with more mild bitters like chamomile or milk thistle and move your way up as you desensitize your palate to the bitter flavor. So those are the five main tastes, like what our taste buds actually accept. But we also have astringency. Now, astringency is not actually a taste, it's a sensation. It is a drying and puckering feeling in your mouth. Astringent herbs tighten tissues, they reduce secretions, and they're really good for issues like diarrhea or excessive sweating, healing wounds, but they can feel unpleasant in the mouth. And this is going to include herbs like witch hazel or oak bark, red raspberry leaf is also astringent, tea is astringent. And I like to include it when I'm talking about tastes and how to make herbs more palatable because a lot of people don't like that astringent sensation and it's really uncomfortable for them. But fortunately, I do have some suggestions on how to make any of these tastes a little bit easier to consume if you're struggling with any of them or how herbs taste in general. Because of course, we want to be taking our herbs on a regular basis because herbs don't work if you don't take them. So the practical part, if you cannot stand the flavor of herbs. So the first thing that I want you to consider is just don't force unpleasant teas. There are going to be certain herbs that we just do not recommend as teas. No one is going to make you drink a gentian tea. It is super bitter, it's really disgusting, and it would probably be unbearable. And in cases where an herb is actually really unpleasant, we most often are going to use those herbs as a tincture or maybe even in capsule form. So don't worry if a tea is so unpleasant for you, you don't have to drink it. I am here to make you feel better in your body, not to make you gag yourself. Which brings me to my next suggestion. You can use herbs as tinctures, and sometimes a tincture can give you a stronger and a faster result. They are one of my favorite ways to take herbs, especially when taste is a barrier. You don't have to linger with a big cup of tea, and plus tinctures are quick, they're effective, and they get down a lot easier than a whole cup of tea because our exposure to a flavor lasts for like a few seconds rather than the length that it takes to actually drink a cup of tea. So here is a trick. Take a sip of water, don't swallow it, and squirt the tincture in your mouth and then swallow it. Or you can add it to a little cup of water and take it like a shot. And this is going to minimize the time that you spend tasting the herb. Now the next suggestion is just to use capsules. 
if there's no other way that you are going to take an herb, but there is a catch. First of all, capsules are my least favorite way to take herbs because as you see, for some herbs like sour and bitter herbs, having exposure to the taste and to the flavor of the herbs is actually a really important part of how they're going to work. Like if we are using bitter plants for things like detoxification and digestive issues, being exposed to a little bit of those bitter compounds is going to create a ricochet effect through the body that stimulates gastric secretions and stimulates the actions of the liver. So we don't 100% want to miss out on tasting the plant. Another thing is that capsules are just not cost effective, but if that's the only way that you're going to get the herb in, then go for it. And here is a pro tip. If you can handle at least a little bit of an exposure to the taste of an herbs, take one of your capsules and open it into the jar so you can actually coat the rest of the capsules with a little bit of the herb powder that way when you take the capsule your brain actually registers the taste of some of those herbs and again that can really enhance the herbs benefit as i mentioned especially for herbs that you are taking for digestion and detoxification now another thing that you can do is actually just sweeten the deal with herbal corrigents. If you are struggling with the taste of certain herbs, you can just use herbal corrigents to make them more palatable. So corrigents are herbs or substances that are added to a formula to improve the flavor of a remedy. Adding a little honey, adding a little peppermint or lemon balm or vegetable glycerin, so literally adding tastier herbs or adding actual sugar can make a huge difference, especially for things like bitter or pungent herbs. For example, I love adding mint to my bitter formulas. It helps to smooth out the taste a little bit better. And then for my winter sadness remedy, I'll mix in a little bit of apple juice or a little bit of pomegranate juice, which not only makes it taste better, but it also significantly increases the compliance and the pleasurability of the medicine. And my clients are so much more likely to take it all throughout the winter and take their herbs consistently because people take things more often when the medicine is also pleasurable. You can also try adding a little bit of honey or glycerin to your tinctures or mix milk and honey into your tea. Over time, I do notice that as people get more and more accustomed to the taste of herbs, they usually start using less sweetener and they prefer their remedies plain. So do trust that over time, your taste preferences will change as you are more exposed to different flavors. And of course, don't be afraid to experiment with herbal corrigents. They really can help balance out stronger flavors and make your herbs much more enjoyable. Now, the next tip is that it's just okay to skip certain herbs. If you truly hate the taste of an herb, it's okay just to not take it. I hate the taste of licorice. I don't like the taste of stevia, so I just don't include them in my remedies, and I don't drink teas or use tinctures that have those herbs in them because they just give me this visceral negative reaction. So remember that there are always going to be alternatives that actually fit with you. You do not have to force any herbal remedy. There are always going to be alternatives. Now, my next suggestion is to actually train your palate with bitters. Now, this might sound counterintuitive, but taking bitters regularly can actually help desensitize your palate to unpleasant tastes. Over time, your body is going to adjust and you'll find yourself more tolerant of and maybe even enjoying the bitter flavors, especially because sometimes you can immediately taste the bitter flavor and feel a shift in your digestive system and in your bodies. Bitters are also, as I said, going to help improve digestion. They're going to help blood sugar balance. So they're gonna support the liver function and taking them with your meals can be a huge game changer for your health because as we might see, the digestive system plays a huge role in the functioning of the rest of the body. And so I highly recommend for so many reasons, giving bitters a shot. Especially if not only do you not like herbs, but you also don't really like vegetables because of the taste, Hot, consuming more bitters is going to help widen your palate so that you are more capable of eating foods with different flavors outside of the standard American diet. And then my final suggestion is sometimes you just have to suck it up. Not all medicine is going to taste good and that's okay. There is a difference between being uncomfortable for a moment and actually being harmed. If the taste is tolerable but not pleasant, 
Sometimes you just got to take your herbs and move on. True self-care often involves a bit of discomfort and that's part of the healing process. Sometimes not all herbal medicine is pleasurable and not all pleasure is medicine. So yeah, sometimes you just got to take your herbs. Okay, so now that we've covered the taste profile of herbs, how to make herbs a little bit more palatable with some actual practical suggestions and some mindset suggestions, I really hope that you feel more empowered to use herbal remedies in your daily life. And yeah, okay. That's it for me today. Yep. I love you. Bye.